Mr. David, it's a pleasure to serve, um, to, to speak under your uh, leadership. I, I am going to keep my remarks short. I've been struck down by that lethal uh, man flu. Um, <laughs> The very dangerous sort of thing that would have seen the minister in bed for a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, look, um, on this issue of uh, historical allegations, I mean, I, I do feel at times that, uh, I do feel at times that, uh, obviously I have a contemporary history uh, in the military, and I have a history around the Iraq historical allegations team um, and so on. But I, I do think we cannot make it clear enough that individuals like me and those I serve with absolutely want to see the rule of law upheld in every uh, nature and engagement that we are involved in. And it is completely wrong to assert that we are looking for some sort of cover-up, some, sort of, um, you know, um, so, some sort of enabling of illegal activities. It could not be more wrong. We join up to the military and we become part of it because we believe in it and we believe in that mission and we believe it in what we're doing in, in making the world a better place. However, with, with this situation, and, and it's fantastic to you know, come and hear uh, my, my right honourable friend, the, the chair of the select committee, his thoughts on this, because I, I think we are going to have to have uncomfortable conversations. We are going to have to intellectually get together and work this out. And why are we going to have to do that? Because it doesn't work for anybody at the moment. The only people that benefit from the current situation are lawyers who I know for a fact are being encouraged to practice in Northern Ireland because they see this issue going on and on and on. And I'm afraid that's not acceptable for the victims. It's not acceptable for the victims' families. And, of course, it's not acceptable for um, our armed forces. But we know that. So what are we going to do about it? I think we've seen a couple of uh, options which are, are, are really clear and straightforward um, that on the face of it, but actually represent deep challenges. And I would echo what um, the chairman uh, of the Select Committee said, in that nobody is going to get a 100% solution out of this. And all I would gently say to those who um, continue this fight, and I will, I will, I will always continue it because I, I think it's the right thing to do but for those who've been going in it far longer than me is that there will come a time when my generation whether they served in Northern Ireland whether they have been affected by crime uh, in Northern Ireland or any of the, the events they will want to move on and the, uh, the, the sort of sympathy that is absolutely with those who have um, suffered wrong whichever side of the divide they are on um, will not last forever and we have a unique opportunity to come together and work this out um, and make it work. And so, look, a, a statute of limitations, I, I think, is important. But you have to be so careful around how you apply it. The current situation where uh, those uh, involved in the Good Friday Agreement and, uh, and acting for the paramilitary, para para um, you know, two years maximum sentence, security forces, it is not the case. That, that is such a binary issue that is not acceptable. We should have moved on from that. But I have huge, um, huge sympathy with um, those who feel that they have been wronged in this process. Um, I, in my own experience of dealing with people who perhaps have been killed on operations, who've lost sons or daughters or husbands or wives, is that ultimately what they really want to know is what happened. Of course, you want to see recompense, people talk about compensation, crime, time in prison. What they really want to know is what actually happened. Um, and, and I don't think we are doing, uh, doing those affected by the troubles of service if we carry on in this manner, which will in no way uncover what actually happened. This requires bold leadership. Um, it, it, it requires somebody who is going to sensitively bring everybody together. Um, and it will, in, of course, it will require... Um, compromises to be made because the current situation is, is not reconcilable um, and above all that it requires courage, people talk about courage in the military and so on um, but there is another element of this uh, this sort of moral courage the courage to do things that are difficult because the bigger picture is worth it um, Northern Ireland is clearly a wonderful place um, it's uh, got a, a bright future the young people of Northern Ireland I know want to leave this um, in the past, um, 
but let's help them do it by, by really uh, coming together in, in a mature, forward-looking uh, way with, the, with those who've been affected by it, the victims and the families, absolutely at the centre of it, but in a, in a magnanimous way um, that can really achieve something for the families, but also uh, halt, I'm afraid, the totally unacceptable practice of pensioners who've served in this country um, being relentlessly um, under, under scrutiny for things from which some people are, are nobody else is alive to recount the incident. Um, so let's, you know, let's seize the initiative of this report. I strongly welcome it. I'm very pleased that the government is going to go away and do a consultation on it because we have to have these awkward conversations because at the moment it, it doesn't work for anyone and it's incumbent upon us as political leaders to, do, to not rest until, um, until we have solved this issue around historical allegations in Northern Ireland.